in the last video, we have looked at more advanced ways of creating and using planes by um, analyzing a geometry, in this case it was uh, this sphere, at certain locations that we created with this uh, popular geometry. So we created these points on this sphere and we um, looked at the normals, so the direction of the surface at each of these locations that was then used as an input to create um, planes. And at each of these planes, we then created um, these cylinders to have this nice distribution and all of the cylinders um, basically pointing in the direction of the surface of the sphere. In this video, um, I will look at a few more ways of analyzing, intersecting and modifying geometry. And I will um, delete most of these. So all that we have is basically a sphere with a certain radius. Um, this sphere is now at, at a certain location. Let me reset this so our sphere is at 0, 0, 0. So all you need to do is um, have a sphere with a certain radius at, um, at the origin point. The next thing that I will do is create a plane. In this case, this will simply be an XY plane. And I will also create another point by simply uh, copying the construct point component um, and using it as my origin input for my XY plane. And then simply moving um, the XY plane in Z direction. So just so that it's like, uh, yeah, in this case, 20, 20 units um, in Z direction. And what I want to do now is to basically cut the sphere um, at this, at this location, so um, with this plane. And while the plane is um, displayed and previewed in Grasshopper as this yeah, finite rectangle, usually, or the way you have to think about it, a plane is an infinite, um, is an infinite geometry. So um, even though it might not look like it, uh, it would uh, get outside of this, um, this sphere, if we were to cut the sphere with the plane, um, this will still intersect. Um, all of the intersection um, tools and components can be found in the intersection tab. And on the left side, we have the mathematical um, uh, intersections, and one of which is BREP and plane. And we will use that one because our sphere is a BREP. So it's not just a surface, but it's a, it's a, it's a um, full geometry. And our plane is our xy plane that we've just created with this constructed point. And so the output of this is a, um, is a curve that uh, sits right at the height of the plane we've created. And if we were to increase the, the height of the plane, the, the size of the um, of the cut section also changes. And of course, the size of the cut section also changes. So this cut can then be used as, uh, yeah, as, as a further input. Um, and you always need to, to make sure that you know what kind of geometry you need as inputs and what kind of geometry you will, you will get um, as an output of a certain operation. So in this case, we used um, this 3D geometry and a plane and our output is a curve. So this um, uh, circular curve, which de uh, describes the basically yeah, a cut section of that sphere. So we haven't cut the sphere in half and created two geometries, but instead we just we were just interested in the um, in this uh, uh, intersection curve. Um, of course, there's other ways of, of intersecting the sphere, and if we were to, if we wanted to, um, to cut the sphere in half and have two uh, 3D geometries, we could do that. But for now, we will use um, that curve because I want to um, use the curve in our further processing. Um, what I will do with this curve is to basically um, chop it up and um, divide it evenly. So in the curve section, uh, in the curve tab. In the division section, we have different ways of dividing a curve. And in this case, I will simply use the divide curve component. 
and here you can input a curve and we will use our um, intersection curve as our input and our count yeah our count can stay at um, at 10 so now we've created 10 points around this um, around this curve and and if you remember in the previous video we um, used this populate geometry command um, that basically just created random points on our sphere but now we have really yeah we've decided on um, the specific location where we want to um, create points with our sphere and if we wanted to we could also use these now and use the um, brep closest point component to find the normals and add geometry there um, right now what i want to do is to simply use a boolean operation um, just as an example to show you how we can modify geometry. So now that we have these points, I can create uh, spheres again. So I, sim I will simply uh, copy the base sphere and reduce the radius quite extensively. So maybe let's take a radius of four and then use these points that we've just created as our um, input. So now we have this circle of points um, that sit right on this intersection curve, which sits on our sphere. And if we were to now uh, use a Boolean operation to basically cut these smaller spheres from the bigger sphere, we can go to the intersection um, tab again. And under shape, we have a solid difference component. And here we can use our sphere as our BREPS A and our small spheres as our BREPs B. And here you can see we've now um, cut these smaller BREPs from our um, larger sphere. And if we were to, to change, for example, the, the location of our XY plane, you can also see all of the um, subsequent operations are also changed. And for example, if we were to increase the size of the spheres that we were using for cutting, this would of course also um, uh, change our shape. And that is just one um, example for um, modifying and creating shapes. And this is um, um, also uh, quite important to, to realize, okay, I have a certain geometry, but I'm probably not just interested in the geometry itself. I want to have um, uh, points or locations on this geometry where I then want to create a, a specific um, operation. And in this case, we um, found this intersection between the sphere and the plane to create a curve. On this curve, we then created uh, 10 points by dividing the curve with the divide curve component. On each of these divisions, we created another sphere, a smaller sphere in this case, and we then used the solid difference component to um, cut these, uh, these, this list of smaller spheres from the bigger sphere. One last point um, before we will uh, look at more uh, intersections in the next video. Um, the solid difference is quite an extensive and heavy component. And if you look below here, you can see the, um, um, how many milliseconds it took to, to complete and to, to um, calculate this. And this has been yeah, quite extensive. And if we had, yeah, instead of uh, 10 spheres, if we had maybe 100 spheres, let me just add, uh, increase the count on the divide curve. Um, you will see that this takes a considerable amount of time um, for Grasshopper to, to calculate. And um, so one thing that you should keep in mind with Grasshopper is that yeah, this took 12 seconds almost to, um, to do this cut. And you can imagine this is very simple geometry. If this was more complex geometry, it would, would take even, um, even longer. So what you should do in Grasshopper is to always stay in the most simple kinds of geometry as long as you can. So for example, um, I, I might not need this um, solid difference at all. I might, I might be able to, to just use... Um, uh, uh, um, to ba basically stay in this abstract way where I just have the points and I might have um, um, my sphere and the points and I might not need the preview of this solid difference because it's so intensive and, and takes so much time to, um, to calculate for Grasshopper. But um, yeah, always make sure that you, that you don't just overload Grasshopper, that um, you keep your parameters in a, in a sensible um, range 
um, because Grasshopper will, will slow down significantly if you start um, doing a lot of cuts and especially a lot of operations with 3D data. So as long as you stay with points, planes, curves, there's no issue. But as soon as you get into 3D data and also um, large meshes, you will um, quickly run into limitations uh, in Grasshopper. And so you need to be careful um, if you actually need it, if you actually need the preview, or maybe um, points and curves might be enough and you don't actually need to, to, um, to actually calculate the, the solid difference.